some really great work coming out of Rat and. I mean, Layla, I said this right before we went on mic. Sailor Moon is probably one of my favorite, like, fan community things I, I love. I can't even English of all time. <laughs> so watching these players who we know and love, Queen, Nasa, Cherry, Leafy, going up against Rat, Dot Q, Matsura, Muti, and Taco. This is going to be so good. And it's Rainmaker. Aren't you excited? As long as it doesn't end in 50 seconds this time around, I will be absolutely excited as we go into Snapper Canal to start things off. And we're going to see the Sailor Scouts coming in with, I do believe, a ballpoint there. Was that a ballpoint? It certainly was. Ballpoint ends up. We've got those wonderful Tetras in there as well. And obviously that can be up. And the Bamboos are coming back on cue. Nice. I am excited to be able to see how they're going to make this work. We have kind of Tetra v Tetra going on as well. Ends up the ends up. It's, it's sort of an evenly matched um, comp that's coming out. I say that and <laughs> we're 1-1. One, one. <laughs> one player and one player. Maybe they're more evenly matched than we had originally anticipated. Yeah, Mutiny was pretty much the only one left on the side of that. They somehow managed to get the jump on the lot of them there and just e equal out that entire scenario. And we're going to lose the Kenza on the side of Rats again. So we're going to have a casualty as well. And down goes Saturn. Two to two though, it seems like they keep getting these uh, pesky trades and the Raybakers just sit there waiting for someone to take it. They certainly are. I mean, at least you get your wish and the Rainmaker, the match won't end in the first 50 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is that at the very least. There's uh, the minute does pass on by and Mercury quickly retreats, knowing full well the Rainmaker is no longer in their possession. They've gone backwards with it though, have rats, and they're finally going around onto the side and most of the sailors are down. It's Q is getting more and more pop offs with this bamboozler as we go. Q, this is the exact type of moments we were seeing the last time we watched Q pop off. Beautiful first shot coming out with that bamboo, getting a really nice one, popping these missiles, and there are a lot of players of Rat still over near this podium. Venus picks up the Rainmaker, though, and is going to push it off, which allows a little extra time for them to take control here as we wait and hold things down. If the Sailor Scouts can kind of burst this bubble and get it out of their zone, they might have something to hold on to here. Certainly will, and they're tr slowly but surely pushing rats back. As you can see, Sako and Q going around on the left yet again. Can the Bambooster get just as fortunate with their shots as they were in the previous time? Shield has been popped and the income has been deployed. The Bambooster will rinse through one and take Stan out immediately. Gets the second on Mercury. This could be dangerous if you allow Q to rack up these flats. Trying to go for more and oh, we couldn't quite get the Raymaker. It despawned just in the nick of time. And that's going to be crucial because whilst they did have player advantage, it was like a 4 to 1 advantage. The Rainmaker's back in the middle, so this is not really going to count for much, but another good splat from Q. The splats that Q are making today are honestly just... I am so excited to be able to continue to watch. Really, every shot, if it's not a hit, then it's something that's going to help the next shot become even better. So Q is just on her game so much, and I think the rest of the team is feeling really good and confident about it as well. Muti does pick up this Rainmaker and is beginning to push through mid as they want to go up the ramp. There is a complete wipe out on Sailor Scouts as Rat brings that Rainmaker home onto the podium and ends the game. Yeah, that was uh, that was incredibly dominant yet again from Rat, proving why they are the team to beat. Just nothing that the Sailor Scouts could do to get back into that match. Look at that, 10 and 9. In fact, most of them also get in 9. Just unbelievable stats once again from Rat. It's just the second you allow Q to pop off like that with the Bamboozler time and time and time again, it, they just locked them in their own spawn area. They couldn't get out. They certainly couldn't. I think that sometimes when you get spawn camped like that, it makes it very difficult for you to break away, especially on that map for Rainmaker because of the positioning of where the podium is. It moves the spawn back so much further. You only have that one area that you have to get past. And if you have an opposing team right up there, it's going to make it very difficult. But Splat Zones on Wahoo World is going to be an entirely different game, Layla. We're looking at a completely different setup, a very tiny zone, and it could offer an opportunity for Sailor Scouts to bring this back. 
they certainly can, and also not to uh, forget about the fact that our wonderful uh, merry-go-round in the middle, it uh, can provide you with a little extra cover, and could in turn provide you with a chance to do a little sneaky, and I was going to say slack instead of flack, what is wrong with me tonight? <laughs> I'm, I'm exchanging letters at the last second, and it's not doing me any favours. Um, but yeah, we are going to see the sailors mostly locking in there, just waiting for Mercury on the sailor scouts. And so is already ready as well. So yeah, just Mercury waiting on now. Yeah, I mean, honestly, don't give yourself, uh, don't blame yourself too much for flipping some words here as I'm doing right now, because <laughs> you have been a marathon caster today doing this entire tournament so far. I'm so excited to be able to do grand finals with you right now. And yeah. I think these games are just going to keep getting better and better. It certainly feel like it, and uh, I think Sailor Scouts, once they start getting in their stride, and uh, we'll see if uh, we'll see if Q decides to stick with the bamboos again. Every other uh, mode, they were switching out into a different uh, charger, so we'll see if they continue to do that again. We're going to see that ballpoint ballpoint yet again, and yep, Q is going to switch into the splatter scope. It is the firefin variant as well. And both teams rocking that custom jewelry scorcher again. Always interesting to note that rats are coming in with two jewelries actually, with the Tetris on the side. Yeah, I was thinking that too. We also have two end zaps, two vanilla end zaps coming out from Sailor Scouts. So maybe they are hoping just to be able to get a lot of paint on the ground and still have a little bit of that extra accuracy that you get with the end zap versus the junior. But I'm I'm not quite sure. I think that it's going to be really interesting to see how they'll be able to handle themselves right now, especially now that. Rat has pushed so far forward and is beginning to pressure them into spawn once again. Yeah, they got a wipe in there as well, which most certainly isn't going to help Taylor Scout. And the second you see Rat push all the way up, and especially with the range of the scope that they uh, that they have, it just feels like it's a chokehold. You just can't seem to break on through. And Sam just about jumping clear off the storm, but is going to swim straight into another suction bomb, and just like that. It's just the one left, and it's only Venus now, and that's another wipe, and with 20 seconds left, I don't think they're going to be able to push this back at all. This is going to be another coast-to-coast -coast win, and look, look at that! They were all just parked in front of the bar, giving a bit of a taunt, and that was just absolutely cruel. That is a 2-0 win for Rat. I am speechless, I think. That is rare for me. Doesn't happen so often that I don't quite know what to say. So I'll say GG and um, we'll see you on Clamblets on Muscle Forge Fitness. <laughs> oh my goodness, me. That was just. Rats were just like, you know what? We got, we got the splats. We got our second wipe. There's 20 points left, and they all just posed in front of the merry-go-round. It was just like, and you realize how quickly they all scattered when they realized, wait a minute, they're all coming at us. This might not be a, such a good idea, but they did just, just about to hold on. But that was just like, that was, that was gutsy. That was a gutsy call for rats. Uh, thankfully, they managed to hold on there, but that was just, that wasn't even close. They got two wipes, kept Sailor Scouts in the midst of their own spawn. And if that's what they were able to do on Splat Zones, how in the world is Clamblitz going to go? I was thinking the exact same thing. I think that we have already seen Q be very, very powerful on that bamboo. The maneuverability of it, the strength, the positioning that Q has when playing that is very strong. So it's going to be up to the Sailor Scouts to figure out how do they come back from this? What are they going to change up in terms of their comp? And what are they going to do to make themselves a little more comfortable going up against the power that we have seen from Rat so far? Yeah, but especially uh, not helpful with the fact that so far it's just been 3 nil after 3 nil. Rat could try and go without conceding the point here if that ends up being the case. That is two Kenzas on the side of the Sailor Scouts. That was Kenza Pro and it was the Kenza shot as well. We've got a base end up and that Nautilus. Ironically enough, Venus and Taco are both coming in with the same Nautilus and the Bamboo is back. It certainly is, and I am excited to see it here. I like this uh, kind of shark that Mercury was doing right now. Waits and gets that beautiful, beautiful pick on Taco. Also trying to get a couple of loose clams in the process. It's going to be a little difficult to live this one out. Not quite able to jump out in time, though. And Tetsuro over here pushing up under the basket, going to try to get the rest of the team in position for this break as they do have a power clam at the ready. Yeah, and you just realize that most of the Sailor, Sailor Scouts are keeping an eye on Surya. 
Every single time they think about going up the ramp, they keep getting caught. Mercury goes down. Venus down to the bamboo. a double. Very tasty there from Q. And surely this would be an attack. They actually throw it into the bamboos and Q quickly jumps out of there. It's not going to be a successful conversion as a result. Just couldn't quite push forward enough. I think that's really difficult for position for Q to have been in there. You know, trying to make sure that uh, getting that power plant in is obviously a priority, but also staying alive. And when you're facing down an entire team right from respawn, it's very difficult to hold your own against someone who's right up in your face. And I think that that was the decision that Q decided to make in terms of backing out. Yeah, Nautilus is gonna get a slap on Saturn. Needs to be careful of this grenade so far. It is scoreless here in Clamplet. The football is still very much alive. The inkjet, I think, went up and got immediately shut down. And suddenly we've got another wave coming on here. Muti just hanging on back for the time being. Remember, they have to be curved because obviously the rest of the team will know exactly where they are as long as they hold on to it. And every single time they get a splat, Sailor Scouts are respawning quick enough to negate it. They certainly are. I've been really impressed with how quickly Sailor Scouts are able to come back in, but not quite in the nick of time. Mutie does skate right over that ramp under Taco there, holding down some nice coverage as Mutie gets that first power plant into the basket. And I have to say, I've been really loving watching Mutie play objective, you know, they were carrying the Rainmaker for a lot of that Rainmaker game, picking up the Power Clan, making sure that they can push it through on those, those that push right there. It's really nice to see as well. It certainly is, but uh, suddenly it's going back the way here. Uh, two player a disadvantage there, the rest of them are just joining back in now. As Taco goes all the way back onto the, uh, onto the bridge, just about surviving for the time being with the help of the dual discorders as missile comes out and targets everybody no one's gonna go down here Bria bomb at the barrier but they don't have any footballs on the side there they are finally starting to get the spots in their advantage here and it's just the squad just left this will be a great opportunity but nobody's got enough clams to form the football yet this is so the moment of the game, right? So that is the exact type of thing that we hate to see. It is so disheartening when you have your entire team in position but nobody has a power clam. They are able to do a couple of things. If they can get two more of those, they are able to take the lead, but it gets cleaned up pretty quickly as well. Q doing a lot of the work there to shut that down right towards the end and pushing back into mid to try to get another couple of picks and be ready for a counter push. Yep, they at least managed to take the lead. Yes, it's by three points, but they'll at least take that. It's just to note that they threw the, their own bubble back up into the spawn area, realizing they need to get that as far away out of the enemy hand since they know they're going to come in with a push. Muti all the way up, gets one splat. Nautilus in no man's land there, and that's two immediately. Four to two advantage. They'll see if they can get the triple. Not quite, just about runs away, but unfortunately, not so fortunate. What's the splatter shot? And this will be a great time to go for another score with one minute on the clock. They will retake the lead here and set them up for a potential 3-0 set victory. It certainly does. I think at this point they are going to do everything they can. Really not able to follow that up with a lot of other loose clams, but that is quite okay. The lead is enough for them at this point. They do have an opportunity to push back on the side of Sailor Scouts, but they have to be very careful in terms of their coordination. Popping those missiles right there as a way to kind of pressure some of the other players out of mid is a very good thing, but not able to stay alive as long as they need to. I mean, this side is completely open for another basket break as well. Yeah, that's not going to help them in the slightest, and with 55 points remaining and 10 seconds on the clock, they will at least get, what well, they do have a football on the field as it is, so Barry is back up, overtime will last for a specific amount of time, but unfortunately they don't have the players to go for the push here, it's 2-3 to three here, and they just keep going down, they can't make a push, and as Q with the Bambooza, is going to make absolutely sure they don't go any further than that. By the time they throw the Bria, off, they're not going to make it in time. Q does go down. They have to run now, but there's nobody close enough to do it. Or are they? They're going up, but they don't have a football. Oh, they don't no. have a football. And crucially, it's going to end 3-0 on the side of Rats. And Rats will win the second ever Girls Duo Cup. Wow. Really, really amazing playing coming out there. Congratulations to Rat for such a, a commanding showing. But Sailor Scouts, you know,
even though they went down 3-0, I think they showed a fantastic performance as well. Really good stuff that was coming out from them and stuff that I can't wait to see for the next time Girls Duo Cup happens as well. Yeah, they certainly 